If you're looking for the latest and greatest ways to take control of the monthly expense you have the most influence over, you've come to the right spot. Welcome to the Efficiency Insider UCAS series. I'm Jeff Julia, award-winning author and founder of Energy Project Advisors. To kick this series off, episode one, I'm interviewing a Yaz Hussein at Treehouse. If you're interested in learning about home automation, whether you rent or own a home, stick around because this is an episode you won't want to miss. A Yaz is on a mission to save the world with technology. He's the department lead at Treehouse's Connected Home Services. And we've pinned him down to tell all about home automation. I mean, I was getting excited just listening to you. It was awesome. And that's going to be so great. I have to kind of temper my, like, change the world attitude. Because you're just selling smart thermostats. I'm like, no, I'm changing the world. On today's show, I have with me Ayaz Hussein. He is at Treehouse. So, Ayaz, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. How long have you been in home automation? Well, so I've been in home automation for a almost three years now. Um, I started out just kind of learning about the, the handful of products that we carried at Treehouse um, and uh, just started to really kind of push for the, the adoption and the creation of an of a installed service around these and just kind of kept an eye on the, on the market and tried to identify trends and see where we were going and see where this industry was going and and see, you know, really made made the most sense for the customer and the consumer. Um, so I've just awesome. kind of been in and around it for about three years now, and made it my uh, my home and my passion for two and a half years. So why Treehouse? Why did you choose Treehouse? Is there something about this company that really attracted you and made you really want to contribute and and help the consumer marketplace? Yeah. So I. Uh, it's actually a pretty funny story. I walked into Treehouse with my mom uh, and my brother when we were going to see a movie, and uh, and we we stopped in and we asked if uh, if if they were hiring. But uh, we I took a look around, and at first I didn't realize kind of what I was looking at. It's a a, a retail a large retail store, very open concept, beautifully designed store. Um, but they they seem to focus on sustainable products and uh, recycled products, things like that, um, alternative uh, cleaning products. Um, and at first, it didn't quite I didn't quite realize what I was looking at. Uh, and then I so I just I was looking for a job at the time. Um, I was in taking some building science classes, and uh, and I luckily got got hired months after my initial inquiry. Um, but I went to kind of our first. Uh, all hands on meeting, and I started to learn about the incredibly innovative things uh, that Treehouse was trying to do and how they were truly truly on the cutting edge of technology and uh, and it was a really pretty emotional moment for me actually I was uh, always interested in sustainability and climate change um, and it was something i I did a huge project on when I was in school and i I actually scared the crap out of myself and uh, and I realized <laughs> this was something that I needed to personally devote. Uh, my life to. And uh, and so once I met Treehouse and met our founder and CEO, Jason Ballard, um, and he kind of told us about how we were working with uh, the most efficient solar panel manufacturers on the planet. Um, we were the first retail partner of the Tesla Powerwall, uh, wow. which was, you know, something I had studied at energy storage was the big gap. And, uh, and so I started to realize that Treehouse was on the cutting edge of building science, technology, um, moving into home automation as well. It was still, you know, three, four years ago, it was still a, a niche market where, you know, people had to do a ton of their own research. Um, but we were, you know, they, they had a, a, a very strict criteria on the products and services that we carried. So we, you know, we're looking at um, the sustainability of a product. So how, what kind of materials are used? You know, what percentage of those materials are is recycled content? So. Right. countertops with nothing but recycled content but then also looking at the manufacturing process of things um you know we're not we don't carry for example granite countertops we don't carry surfaces that are open pit mined because it's just too intensive on on the planet um and then we're also looking at things like corporate responsibility so do they pay their employees a living wage um you know or we're not we don't want to partner with companies who have factories where you know people have you know, to put it bluntly, high rates of suicide and stuff like that. So it's something that we really wanted to kind of take a new approach to what we carried, how we carried, uh, and how we how we carried out our business model 
um, by really putting the customers first. Um, there's not, there's a lot of people doing similar things, home improvement stores, general contractors, um, but it's really kind of this combination uh, services and product store where you can walk in, you can take a look at some things like water filters and smart home devices, but then you can also have us come out and install a full system for you um, all by just walking into the store and we'll project management, we'll source the materials, we'll manage the contractors. Um, we have our own contractors as well for certain projects and which is a really interesting concept and something that I was uh, incredibly proud to, to get to be a part of. Yeah, that really sounds like an incredible business model. Um, something that is obviously tra attracting the best and the brightest minds. So since you first joined Treehouse, what are some of the changes that you have seen strictly in the home automation space? I mean, a few years ago, it was completely different than it is today, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, it was very, the, the race for the hub was uh, the, the, win, the winner take all hub was the, uh, a really big deal. And that was kind of, you know, what, what company, whether it was Iris or uh, Wink or Samsung Smart Things was new at that time. Um, and, you know, which hub is going to be the guy to, to bring it all together, you know, and I scoured the, the internet, everything, everywhere I could find for that one hub that would connect all of these great brands, good interface, and give us a decent amount of control for a reasonable cost. Because there are people out there like Control4 and RTI and all of these big integrators and integration companies um, that stemmed traditionally from audiovisual people who were, you know, looking at doing your home theater system. Uh, and right. so those people had options out there, um, but they were using, you know, kind of manual, um, manual connection, really just stealing the signal um, with a high powered receiver. But these were, you know, multiple thousands of dollars. And, uh, and that was really tough to stomach. And didn't, I didn't see that as really being a mainstream solution. Um, and so just kind of Treehouse as a company has has partnered with Nest now, um, but we carried kind of the best. And, and Nest is owned by Google, correct? Correct. Nest is now owned by Google. Um, they were bought for $3.2 billion a couple years ago, but I believe, I couldn't remember the date on that. I believe we were selling Nest, we were selling Nest before they were bought by Google. Um, but it was a, you know, a really innovative company and they you know, they brought this into the mainstream. They, they turned the ugly useless poor poor interface poorly designed interface of a of a thermostat and they made it easy to use they made it beautiful um they added intelligence they just, they made it work and they didn't make it too scary for anybody i mean it's definitely still i still get questions to this day oh i don't want it to learn about my schedule i said well no problem just turn that feature off that's very easy they understand that um but you know we really the hub was the holy grail um, or the, the one app that connected everything if it was through cloud servers, but there really just, there wasn't one, you know, and, and the yeah. closest thing at the time was probably, you know, Samsung smart things that held, it had a lot of partners, um, but just their, their software and their cloud services, they were, they were so open that uh, people who maybe had a bat, a, an app that wasn't as well designed that was connected somehow would cause, would cause an issue with your device, you know, and you may have the top tier best devices connected to your Samsung SmartThings hub, but if there's a little problem, then then your your system's kind of out of whack. And so oh. the the real goal that we wanted to to do that we wanted to uh, to get to with, with this was was kind of an, an installed service um, where we can take all the guesswork out of it because I I sat there and I did the research. People joke all the time like, did you? did you get a degree in home automation? I said, no, I, I Googled it to death. I Googled it and beyond, <laughs> beyond any reasonable amount of time, I just spent scouring the internet and, you know, podcasts and research article. I, you know, I'd scour patents uh, on, on Google patents and, and things like that to try and find who's going to do this, who's going to do it well. So, so we wanted to get to an installed service um, with this. And for us, we wanted to take care of our customers and, uh, and that, doing something with a non-reliable service just wasn't an option for us. Yeah. Um, so we kind of had to 
to wait and bite the bullet and bite the bullet and wait for the for Nest to finally come out with this full line of products that they that they that they've come out with and now you know now it's kind of this full suite of products plus um, a handful of of the leading works with Nest vendors, we're actually able to do a full same day installed service um, covering uh, a large variety, a large swath of your home uh, for significantly cheaper than the traditional uh, audio visual integrators and, and these people um, who are in our, in my personal opinion, uh, somewhat relics and, and moving out yeah. of, of relevance. That's that's really incredible journey. Just how the space has changed so much over the past few years. You know, a few years ago it was super fragmented, and you had some AV guys really trying to to drive the industry forward. And then Nest comes out, yeah, like, and then they're bought by Google, and now uh -huh. Google has this full suite, and Nest has this full suite, and you guys are now offering this amazing service. And we'll get uh -huh. to that in a few minutes. Uh, it's really quite incredible just how easy it is for for consumers to take advantage of home automation these days so mm -hmm. that said where do you see it going over the next few years well that so the biggest i think the biggest driver that has gotten us where we are is uh is voice control um you know that was something that kind of that kind of killed the requirements of this one specific hub because now you had all of you had, you know, Amazon Echo was kind of the, the first, one of the first to do it, um, shortly followed by Google. Uh, and then this gives you kind of this, you know, ubiquitous, easy to use uh, interface uh, that we're all, we're very comfortable using our voice. We've all, you know, we've all been talking to each other for a very long time now, you know, and smart and smartphones are only, you know, they're not very old and not everybody is comfortable using a smartphone. And i and we all know not everybody is great at using a smartphone, let alone comfortable. Um, so voice, I think, is one of these really big um, disruptors in this industry. Uh, and, and really, I kind of see it, you know, as being voices to me and to Treehouse, voice control is the bridge between smartphone control and true automation. Um, that's kind of... Uh, when we list it, we, we kind of talk about it. I kind of talk about it as a separate category entirely of, of smartphones and smart controls and this whole smart home concept is because what we want to be, what we want this to do is to actually respond to different conditions. So we want when your, when your thermostat knows, Hey, it's warming up. Uh, I, I'm going to have to turn on this AC here in the next 30 minutes to achieve your desired temperature. Uh, what are some other things that I can do to help make this easier on me? So for example, like let me lower my shades on my south facing windows. Let me go ahead and cut out some of that that sun uh, that sun infiltration and lower some of that heat gain, hopefully. And so that may make it easier for me to do this. You know, and this is this is just the beginning. And that's really what's super exciting for, for me and for Treehouse is that we can use what we know about building science. We can use the technology that exists and the products that exist to to create a truly automated home that responds to energy requirements. You know, this, it's something that we've, we've toyed with the idea about, you know, connecting your solar. So we sell, we sell solar packages and we sell battery storage. We sell the Tesla Powerwall. So in a, you know, in a perfect world, we have the Tesla, the Tesla Powerwall tracking our energy consumption, our energy storage. Our sol they, it, it knows how much power it's going to receive. It's communicating to local weather services, giving us an idea of cloud cover, temperature, humidity, things like that. And then this can go ahead and, and tell our energy hogs in our home, such as our thermostat, our AC units, our water heaters, our lighting, our miscellaneous electronics, our dryers, our clothes dryers, when they're not, if they're electric or even if they're gas. Um, but we can have our home respond to our energy production and therefore use less energy overall but then also use it wisely. Uh, and so it's kind of, for me, a bridge into the smart cities, but we start with a smart home, a true energy and a true smart energy management system uh, that, that will respond to, to various inputs and adjust accordingly. Uh, if we can reduce everybody's consumption without having to replace everybody's appliances and redo everybody's house, uh, you know, and, and, add new insulation or swap out the AC, if we can use what already exists 
and make it smarter and leverage technology and, and the science that we know, uh, then we can, we can do a lot, you know, and that's, that's yes. been kind of my personal mission within this. Um, you know, our, our, that's, that's our company's mission overall is to make homes healthy and sustainable for everybody. Um, but for me personally, it's to kind of start this movement into a true smart home that is responding to energy and reducing everybody's energy consumption. You know, if we, if the yeah. United States could cut their, their home's energy consumption, everybody's house's energy consumption by 15 to 30%. I mean, we've made incredible progress to, towards our, our goals as a society. And, you know, we've reduced the need for, for more energy production. It becomes cheaper to the, to the taxpayer. You don't have to build new power plants. Um, but that's, you know, that starts to get way, way out there. And, um, but <laughs> the, you know, we want to start by making home automation easy and attainable for everybody. Um, and, and I really think that that's kind of the direction this is going. And that's, what's so fun about about partnering with uh, with such a great company such as Nest is they've got a very similar goal um, to Treehouse uh, and they have you know the desire and they've they've proven that it is is successful Treehouse is still young and it is harder for us to take these kind of way out there risks um, at this at this time but you know it's nice that we have Nest who is willing to push these boundaries um, to make things easy attainable um, and intuitive, uh, as, and effective. That's just, it's so hard because there's so many beautiful things. There's so many of these products out there, um, but making them effective and, and useful, you know, we don't want to sell junk. That's another one of the, the tenants of, uh, of our treehouse buying philosophy is, you know, if you can't find it recycled, if you can't find it, you know, with, with, with whatever it is, eco-friendly, it's gotta be good. Cause if we keep yeah. it out of the waste stream, if it's a quality product, it's not going in the waste stream. You know, it's hard right. to find a hammer made out of recycled materials, but if that hammer is going to last you a hundred years, that's the last hammer you buy. And there's no more waste produced by your buying habit. You know, planned obsolescence is a, is a really big deal uh, that it's not quite talked about. And, and in this, in the United States, you know, there's, there's all the, there's these four cycles of the product. There's, you know, production use, um, or sorry, three production use, but then disposal. And we don't think about disposal. And, you That's know, I, I challenge anybody to go to a landfill and just tell me that, you know, that doesn't sink your heart, you know, that that doesn't hit you, you know, people are like, don't litter. Well, I mean, it's really all ending up on the surface of the earth anyway. I mean, I obviously don't litter. I mean, get it where it needs to go. But, yeah. you know, we, we think about these things. We vilify people for littering, but it's like it's all just sitting on a pile somewhere, you know, just right outside the city, right where you can't see it. You know, that, so that, that brings up a really good point because there's some misconceptions and some myths that consumers have, not only about the life cycle of a product they buy, but just about smart homes and home automation in general. You know, with cost, with the the level of technology that you need to interact with. You know, hey, some people think I need to be some kind of a tech genius just to realize the benefits of a smart home or you know, a, a, an automated device or a voice activated device. What what are some of the myths that you have come across and the misconceptions? Maybe some things that customers at Treehouse have, have brought to your attention or asked you, what are some of those? Yeah, uh, there are, there's a wide, wide variety. Um, I've, I'll say one of the funniest ones was uh, somebody asking me, uh, so I want, they said they needed a second Nest thermostat to carry around with them to control their original, the actual installed Nest thermostat. So they thought the controller was the thermostat only. Uh, and wow. it's, no, it's, it's your phone. It's your phone. It's your voice. And then, of course, it's the thermostat itself. Um, you know, that's uh, we'll have, you know, we'll have older folks who are like, I'm not super comfortable using my my phone and I don't use it effectively, say. And, uh, you know, like one of the biggest things I tell people, I'm like, just update your apps, update your phone and you won't have problems. Um, but, you know, using using these things effectively is important. And so you know, I'll tell them like, look, you have a smart light switch, your lights turn on and off automatically. If they dim during the daytime, you know, they, you know, we're working towards having uh, light responsive 
uh, LED bulbs, so where they're check they're sensing the light levels and they're dimming themselves accordingly. Because you don't need to blast your room with light in full daylight anyway. Um, so I tell them like, look, if that all is a problem, just turn it off with the switch. It's still got to be usable, and that you know comes to where we we want to partner with with good brands where. If you're if it's too warm in your house and you're you know you got a Nest thermostat, walk up to it and turn it down. It's just a dial. Just turn it down and it'll do it for you. It'll take care of it and it's actually going to go ahead. It's going to use that input and it's going to learn. Um, and so, you know, misconceptions range from do you know do I have to program it myself? And you know, a lot of people are like, what happens if the Wi-Fi goes down? Does my thermostat stop working? I'm like, absolutely not. You know, it's still connected and hardwired into your existing system and it'll still work manually. Or, you know, same like thing with light switches, if my Wi-Fi right? goes down. Yeah, it's all, it's all still connected to what it's controlling, and it still has to work manually. You know, that would be just, I mean, there are some, thing, some products out there, and, you know, we don't even touch them when they're just, you know, wirelessly controlling. And I'm like, well, yeah, we don't want to have somebody's AC unusable if their Wi-Fi goes down from a storm or something. You know, who knows? Um, yeah. So there, there is a... It's hard to pinpoint a couple, but there's just such a wide range of misconceptions here, uh, and that's what really something. Cost, cost. What absolutely. Cost, you know what? Is, what is minimum investment to to make your home smart or to really gain the benefits of home automation and smart home devices? What What is a minimum investment someone should expect? Um, it, you know, it really depends on what your main goals are. If your goal is to reduce energy usage and lower your bills, uh, a Nest thermostat, 250 bucks. There are utility companies around the country that will, some will give them to you for free, some will give them to you for half off. Uh, and then Nest just released a more streamlined uh, version called the, the Nest E. Um, e stands for everyone. Um, that's 169 bucks. Uh, and for example, in Austin, uh, they'll give you, Austin Energy gives you $85 off a Wi-Fi learning thermostat, off a Wi-Fi control thermostat. You know, so for 85 bucks, right. you've got a smart thermostat. You're controlling 50% of your electricity usage from your phone, and you're putting in Google and Nest's learning algorithms to help automate your big energy hog of an AC. You know, so that's really kind of, I, I'm like, if you want to get your feet wet, start with the learning thermostat. You know, you can check out their website and see uh, if it's compatible. Um, and then really, you know, if, if it's security, I, I Nest Secure, which is their, their new security system that came out, is a fantastic option. Um, I think people kind of wanted something super flashy and crazy and new. Uh, and it was like, that's not what was needed at this time. It was something that worked. Um, and so Nest Secure system starts at $500, um, which I, I absolutely admit is not an easy initial investment for the majority of the population. Um, but it's something that can take care of, you know, two rooms uh, for 500 bucks. And then you, it's, it's $60 for an additional sensor, which does open and close and, and motion, which is something that there, there's not other companies that do that combined sensor. So if you're, if you've done the, a bunch of research like I have, you, you know, you kind of see that there are, there are some cost benefits there. Um, but, you know, we have, I, we were in a home two days ago and uh, we were do, installing a system for a customer and we were telling them everything we were going to do. And it was, you know, 30 light bulbs, 30 smart light bulbs, uh, thermostats, six cameras, a full security system, uh, you know, and she was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be like $10,000, $15,000. And I was like, Hold on, not at all. It's it was maxed out about five grand, uh, and that was a full blown system. I mean, that was wow. a ton. But you know, if you go to an audio visual integrator and you say, "Hey, your voice control, I want you to give me audio control," because they use Chromecast, thirty five bucks, plug it into a TV, audio visual control with your voice. You know, uh, they wanted to do lighting, they wanted to do thermostats, they wanted to do security systems, and you go to a traditional audio visual integrator or a home automation company uh, and they it's significantly more expensive i mean your your initial investment to start with some of those companies is you know a thousand to five thousand dollars for their receiver which is kind of their hub you know and it's ugly that's and incredible it, yeah it, it really is and that was you know most of my system that's the most expensive system we've sold to date uh, most of them are you know fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars and you get quite a bit they're reducing their electric bills you know, they're make they're changing the way they interact with their home. 
uh, something Ness likes to say that really sh stuck with me was changing the feedback loop of your home. You know, you're actually going to learn what's happening in your home rather than finding out after the fact. You know, for smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors, people are like, that's $120 a piece. I said, well, you know, unless you're paying for a monitored security system, you're going to find out after your house is on fire and your neighbor or the fire department calls you or you just come home to a fire truck outside. You know, it's like, is finding out that there might be a problem worth that $120? You know, that's really, that's a complete flip, a complete paradigm shift of what smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors can be. So, uh, so it's what really I'm gaining here is that the benefits are just immense. There are just too many to even discuss on the, on this podcast. And you can get yeah. your feet wet for as little as $150. And, you know, you don't need to take out a huge loan if you want to have a full suite, you know, very intelligent smart home with with security and energy saving devices and uh, voice activated devices, comfort, security, convenience, 150 to $5,000. I mean, anybody can make an investment somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is very much an investment because with the energy savings, you're getting paid back. It's not an expense, it's an investment. You're making your money back over time. Absolutely, Nest, Nest flat out states on their, on their website, this will pay for itself in two years. You know, and I personally put uh, when I moved, I moved to Dallas and I put a smart thermostat in my apartment. And uh, to be fair, my uh, my girlfriend was leaving it quite cold um, there. And it was we weren't effective at turning it off as we came and left. I dropped my utility bill from two hundred and fifty dollars to one hundred dollars. And now part of that was weather. And it's, you know, you're not going to cut your bill in half the first month. Um, but. I mean, easily, a, you know, 20, 30% reduction in my electric cost directly from the thermostat learning and automating and learning how to, how to heat and cool my home based on my, my comfort, but then also based on the equipment. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, it's, there's, there is so much uh, to, you know, to talk about and, and so many benefits, but the nice thing is that this is just the beginning, you know, and you, you need to either do a ton of research on your own, um, or, you know, come talk to somebody who, who's got some experience in, in this off the shelf and consumer grade products, you know, which are really back end technology and hardware are catching up with their uber expensive competitors. Um, and, you know, all of this stuff, is just a software update away from getting ever, even better. And that's something that's super fun about Nest and Google is that I know they're every single one of their products is going to do more you know, six months, a year, every, you know, every couple of months, you get a software update and you get a new feature, you know, so the Nest Indoor IQ Cam, which was very, which was, you know, and, uh, admittedly also expensive as, as a camera for $300, but their video quality, you know, their, their, the fact that it, without moving, the camera records in 4K, and then if it sees a person, it zooms in on that person and follows them through the, the field of view. Like that's what you care about. You don't care about the squirrels running across the yard. You don't care about, you know, the you know may not care about the dog wagging his tail if he walks by the camera. Like you want to know, hey, is there a person in my home? You know, yeah. and that's something that through software and through, of course, through the hardware made it possible. But then all of a sudden they said, oh, hey, by the way, Google Assistant is now built into your camera. You can now control the rest of your smart home stuff by just saying, hey, Google, to your camera. You know, and then that is a $179 piece of equipment, the Google Home, that was previously required to do such a thing in the house. Uh, and yeah, so it sounds like things are really moving fast and there's a lot of components here. And uh, yeah, as your story about your girlfriend and your apartment brings up a good point, is, is smart home and uh, home automation devices just for homeowners or can renters take advantage of this too? And if so, you know, where do people start? Because mm -hmm. things are moving fast, evolving quickly. There's a lot of new players in the game, new devices, software updates, hardware. It gets overwhelming quite quickly. Yeah, it really can. I mean, if you just Google smart home, uh, you're going to get uh, absolutely blasted um, by results. Um, but the, you really can do things uh, as a renter. Um, I don't own a home. I have not owned a home in my life, um, but I've had 
a smart apartment wherever I've kind of gone. Um, of course, a lot of it's going to depend on your apartment complex, but things that you can do without having to really ask permission, uh, you can do smart light bulbs, right? So this can help you, one, you're swapping what are generally not LED light bulbs in your apartment, halogens and CFLs like are in mine, uh, is swapping it to an LED bulb, which is first off the bat energy savings, right? And then you're going to allow you to dim these uh, if you prefer the more expensive versions of the bulbs change the colors to 3 million colors and you know people are like oh, I wish I could paint my apartment walls I'm like paint with light you know put a Philips Hue light bulb in there and paint with light and tell me it doesn't make a huge difference to the way you feel and the way the apartment looks um, and then it's a great you know, idea yeah you like that was what I, I wanted to paint my walls and I was I couldn't and I wasn't willing to paint and then repaint and so like you know I'll just paint with light and I will set up my smart bulbs to be different colors whenever I wanted them to be, you know, and I can have them blue in the evenings or, you know, one of the most fascinating things um, is circadian rhythm, right? So the, the, we're learning a lot about it as people are putting these blue light filters on their computers and phones because uh, this blue light is stimulating. So using smart bulbs and just saying, hey, run circadian rhythm. In the morning, I want you to help me wake up. In the evening, I want you to help me naturally fall asleep. Um, the Nobel Prize in medicine this year was actually awarded to a doctor studying the circadian rhythm. Um, so smart bulbs give you that, that feature, uh, allowing you to, to adjust the circadian rhythm of your home and kind of help you just naturally feel better. I mean, I've had people like, I don't have to drink coffee anymore. I wake up, my lights are the perfect color temperature. They naturally stimulate me and I just somehow feel more awake, you know, and they now switch in some light bulbs in your light, apartment. This is yeah. incredible. And they're like 25 bucks a piece. Uh, and that's, you know, some of the more expensive ones. Um, but you can do lighting. Uh, if, you're up, if your apartment is willing, uh, you can do a thermostat. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't personally ask permission because I am very comfortable installing and reinstalling my thermostat. But I put in a, a Nest E thermostat. Um, you can do, uh, you know, some, if some people are worried about security, if you've got a, you know, don't live in a gated gated apartment community. Um, the Nest Secure system is something that is just using adhesive uh, so you can pull it off. Um, I will say be, have a little paintbrush so you can touch up the paint. It will pull some off of there. Um, but you can, uh, you can absolutely kind of secure your home, do change the lighting, uh, make it more energy efficient with the thermostat. Uh, and there's, you know, smart plugs and smart, smart plugs, smart switches are things you can also do to automate um, your house. So for example, my TV and my speaker system, um, my quote unquote speaker system, my single speaker, um, doesn't have to <laughs> run. It doesn't need to pull power all day. You know, my, if, for example, DVR cable set top boxes. If you're not recording something during the day, those actually use a ton of power there. I saw a big article about, you know, they're using up to $50 a month in electricity, which is just outrageous, you know, so put a, put a single smart switch on it anywhere, 25 to 50 bucks and say, hey, go ahead and turn off for the eight hours that I'm gone today, and we can cut this. And then even overnight, have it turn off, you know? Uh, and so I have like a little $10 coffee maker, right? And I plug it into a Wemo smart switch, and in the morning, I, I, or in, in the evening, I preload it with my coffee and my water, and then in the morning, it just comes on on its own. It's scheduled, and I don't need a fancy coffee maker. I have a nice drip cup of coffee, you know, for the cost of a $10 coffee maker and a $25, $30 switch, you know, and that and you can automate all of this and that all can come with you at the end without breaking your lease, you know, and then the last thing, the last thing was the August smart lock. So that just automates a deadbolt. Uh, and that is one of the nicest things, especially if you have roommates. Um, it goes on the inside of your door. It does not change the, the key, right? So that's always a concern. You can't change the locks, of course, in your own apartment. That's a violation of your lease almost everywhere. Um, but this allows you to control your lock with your phone, uh, give, you know, give codes to guests, give codes to roommates, you know, parents, brothers, sisters, whoever it is, uh, without having to make duplicate keys, because you're not allowed to make duplicate keys in apartment complexes. And it doesn't violate the lease, and it is super easy to install, doesn't damage anything, and I can take it with me when I leave. And I've had my August lock on three different apartments now. Uh, and so it's very, very nice. This is great. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And whether or not our listeners are in 
Austin or Dallas where Treehouse currently has stores, listeners can still buy all these products you're talking about on Treehouse website, right? How, how can people get in touch with you and, and Treehouse in general? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we launched our e-com, our e-commerce site. Uh, it's tree.house backslash shop. Um, our, our website is a little funky. It's tree.house, not treehouse.com, um, but tree.house. And, uh, and everybody who is shopping on our website is our customer, which means give us a call, send us an email. Um, that email actually goes straight to me um, or that call will get forwarded to me. And, uh, and we have a lot of good information on the pages themselves about, hey, what does this work with, right? So that's a big thing. You know, you want to have stuff that works together. You don't want 10 different apps. You want these things to talk to each other and enhance each product, right? So we've got a little tool, almost like a filtering builder tool where you can go and say, I have an iPhone, so I need my, I need products that work with iOS. And then, you know, somebody gave me a Amazon Echo for Christmas. So I want products that work with Amazon Echo. And so you can click these filters and have all of the products that don't meet that criteria, that don't work with those things, disappear. So you can see, you know, all the products that work with iPhones, or you know, if you're like, hey, my husband has an Android, I have an iPhone, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click both. We're gonna tell you what products one work with both. And then if you use Google Home or you use Nest, which we obviously recommend, um, you can filter by these different categories and you can see what'll actually work for me. And then, you know, worst case scenario, you don't get all the information you need. Uh, that's kind of where Treehouse wants to be better and, ha- and provides you excellent customer service. So we've got smart home consultants in the Austin and Dallas store. Um, I've given hours and hours of training to every employee in Treehouse um, about all of these different products. We've, you know, I've got a nice resource guide for them if they need to answer questions, but we've got almost all of the information we have is, is out online um, available for our customers. Uh, we really believe that education is going to make this a lot easier for people to do. Um, so go to our website, um, give us a call. You know, if you call me from Maine, I'm not going to say, oh, you're not my, you're not my ideal customer. You know, we're going to want to talk to you and say, hey, ask me all the questions you have, uh, help you build an order. Um, we'd love it if you purchased it from us. Um, but we really just want to help you uh, a- achieve uh, our mission together. Uh, and that's always kind of been our philosophy is answer the questions, provide the education, um, and then hopefully you'll choose to, to to shop with us. Yeah, and in Austin and Dallas, provide the installation. Talk for a few seconds about this new service. I think is absolutely fantastic. This smart home installation service you guys have just launched. Yeah, so we kind of we we filtered out some of our uh, brands that that turned out not to be perfect uh, and not to kind of meet meet our uh, our our expectations. Um, but so we will come. And we will, uh, first you can, you build your own smart home online. You give us your zip code, your square footage of your house and what you're interested in. Um, and it'll select, it'll suggest some products. Um, you can put down a deposit, which is 25 bucks, uh, fully refundable and it books my time. So I'm one of the consultants. And so it says, Hey, Yaz, we need you to come out to this house. Uh, this is what we think we want. Um, and I'll show up in a truck. I will have all of the products you said, as well as alternates more and and more of other things because uh, you're not locked into anything so we'll show up we're actually going to walk through your home figure out what works for you you know we don't like i said we don't want to sell you junk we don't want to sell you more things than you need uh, and we're going to help you configure your smart home uh, then i'm going to go bust it out of the truck and install it right then and there um, i will download all the apps on your phone uh, set up everything pair everything connect everything uh, and then we're going to teach you how to use it um, because that you know, we see people who have smart devices that are underutilized. Uh, and so, you know, your home is only as smart as the user is. Uh, so we want to we want to actually teach these people how to use these smart homes, how to get the most out of them. Um, and we're done in a day. So we'll show up and you'll have a smart home in a day uh, or half a day if you're not going all out. Um, but that's uh, kind of an on demand smart home delivery service um, that is is really not being done at the time, Especially, definitely not being done in a day. Um, but the people who are kind of doing it are locking you into monthly contracts and things. And we're, you know, you own the devices, you pay a reasonable cost to install uh, and for us to configure everything. And then you have a really meaningful home upgrade uh, that that was one of the more <laughs> inexpensive things that you can really do to your home. And, and, you know, in terms of bang for your buck, like I, 
I love the flooring that we do. I love our kitchens. I love, you know, our roofs, but it's kind of, that's something that's going to start to blend into your house. Uh, this is something you're going to interact with every single day. You turn your lights on and off every day. You generally change your temperature every single day. Most people turn on and off their TVs every single day. And so this is something we completely change the way you use it and change your home. Uh, and, and it's just a lot, a lot easier to use. And personally, hopefully I've reduced your electricity consumption anywhere from 10 to 30%. And I will, I'll leave happy if I can do something like that. This is fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, utility companies around the country are offering refunds on these projects. Uh, sorry, these smart home devices. And those refunds look like uh, utility rebates. So consumer, consumers can apply mm -hmm. for rebates and basically get a discount on, on some of these devices. So now that we've gotten everybody all excited about smart home, do you think now is a good time to jump on the bandwagon here and really get your feet wet and, and take advantage of all the benefits that smart home and home automation provides? I really do. Uh, you know, compared to what you, what it used to cost to do some of these same upgrades and features, um, the cost is, is significantly, significantly lower than it used to be And this. And I'm not talking 20 years in the past. I mean, like, it is significantly cheaper today than it was three to five years ago. And, uh, and that's really something that we're excited about. Um, and also all of these things, when you pair, when you find yourself a good hardware manufacturer, such as Nest, right? You are, you are confident that one, Nest is going to be around. Two, their, their products don't feel like junk. But then three, they are going to give you more and more and more from just that initial purchase, right? So we have people who have version one of the Nest thermostat and they don't just get stuck with the features that they purchased version one, you know, they got every single update that every, or that was physically possible, of course, um, on, on the new, you know, we're on generation three of the thermostat. So things like uh, a warning for changing your filters, that was a software update. They could send that to you, they could get you to have a better product without you paying another, another cent. Uh, and so really, you know, finding one of these companies that you trust, um, that you're, that you're willing to go with, uh, and knowing that they're going to get better and better for you, uh, is really pretty exciting. Um, I, you know, the, the sensors and the smart home and the nest security system is something that I am very excited about as I believe there's a lot of stuff that they can do. Um, and just, you know, if you start to dream, what could possibly happen? You know, I, I think everything is in play and, uh, and I think we can really do a lot with what exists today, um, for significantly cheaper. And I think you're only going to get more and more out of it. Uh, and I think this is really a way we kind of, as a, as a country and as a society, we have to go, we got to use what we have, make it better. Uh, and, and we'll, that'll kind of free us up from a lot of, a lot of issues. All right. Well, Yas, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's been really great having you on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend. And to receive our latest episodes in your inbox, join the Insiders list below.